She actually reminds me of Alex from Chapter 2 Vintage Company. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am packing for the last major Florida antique show of the season. It is the third and final Renegers antique extravaganza in Mount Dora. And I thought it would be fun to show you the cool stuff that I had at the last one and some of the great things I shopped for and give you a taste of the show to whet your appetite. I hope you're able to come out this weekend if you're anywhere in the Orlando area. You are absolutely invited to see me in booth 4079. In the meantime, let's show you some of the fun from the last time just to tantalize you a little bit. I've got a pair of these. I think these are really cool. They're teak. They're from the 70s. They're not high-end, high-dollar items, but they really are super functional with that pocket for the magazines. They're a good look. They're lightweight and easy to move around, and people like them, so they should sell. And then there's this very important toilet seat cover. Goodbye, cruel world and then a lot of very important messages to the people using your toilet. This one thankfully hasn't been used. So I've got afghans on the car and then a really cool lamp with the lotus petals and a swan at the base from the 1980s. And yes, these are starting to sell. People kind of thought of them as tacky, kitschy novelty, and now they're looking at that and thinking that's actually what makes it cool. And I agree. So I bought a couple, I've sold some, and I believe more will go. And there's a nice folding, it's like a Shesham table from India, but this one has a checker or chessboard on top of it. So I thought that was neat. Another kitty in maroon this time. It was fun to have some different colors of these. And this Nodder felt dog that would have been in the back of a car window in most circumstances, but someone spared his life, and so he's not cooked and cracked and faded from years. And he's very happy. Look at him nodding his head. This is neat because it's a little box made probably a hundred years ago from pieces of the old pilings of the London Bridge. Everybody is in this one. You've got Dick, Jane, Sally, and Fluff and Spot. Poor Fluff. Fluff had the hardest time. He's being chased by a dog and a kid on roller skates. CC. Oh, C. C. Dick. They always show Fluff diving under the couch and hiding from them. And gee, I wonder why. It's cute that she's got a Raggedy Ann doll. These were teacher size posters. And if you're a Joan Crawford fan, well, you'd have to be a real fan to have seen this movie because this was late, late, late in her career. And it was kind of a B-horror movie called Straight Jacket. But it had the creator of Psycho, the director of Homicidal, and the co-star of whatever happened to Baby Jane. Now, one thing you can do to date these and make sure you know what edition you're getting is look in the lower corner. The first number, 64, is the year that this was done. And if it has a slash with another date that's later than that, then it means it's a recreation. But this one is original from 64. I needed to bring this big pill check bowl because I thought this is something that people in Florida like. There's a big Chihuly Museum in St. Petersburg, for example. And I figured they probably have seen them less often than my folks on the Pacific Coast who are used to it because it's where they made a lot of this stuff. So I thought I'd bring it here for fun. I'm going to pull out here and show some Weller Lorbeek. I've got the three-piece console set. I recently sold a bed vase online and it went very well. It's a very popular pattern. Here's two other vases in the lavender. 
what? right around 1930. Just a very neat high style deco pattern. Got a bunch of beer stuff. Can't go wrong with beer stuff. And if you need a way out, well, there it is. And if you need a champion, well, Barbarella, the queen of the universe. Well, she's the queen of the galaxy, but she's going to save the universe. It's actually a re-release, it says. So this is going to probably be about 1970. But it is original from the time. And this should be worth about a hundred and a half because that movie is iconic. And Jane Fonda looked pretty great. This set is Taxco and it's sterling on copper. They sell in the four to five hundred dollar range. And it's neat to have the tray and the three pots with it. It's very dog friendly here because it's outdoors. So you can bring your pooches as long as they're well behaved. Let's see what else we have that we can show here. Some very tiny glass fishing floats and a neat Oaxacan Mexican. This one says it is from, yep, Oaxaca and it's a Dona Rosa, which is one of the names that people look for in this style of ceramic work. And then I just got more of the gas pump signs because these do sell for me for about $30 a piece. So it's fun to find those. This big leaping deer, it's a great color and you can see their mark on the bottom. Niloke was from Arkansas and Niloke is kaolin, which is one of the main ingredients in their clay spelled backwards. This guy's at least cute. You gotta give it credit, right Misty? Come on. And this piece they... here is Mary Gregory and this one is European because her face is painted pink. Here's the Knights of Malta apron, and I was informed after I misspoke that this is not related to the Masons in any way. That it is its own organization. So I just wanted to share that. It's a needled apron with the metal braiding and everything on the edge and that cool skull. We all see the McCoy Swan fairly often. We rarely see it in this silver color. This was popular in the late 70s and early 80s, right about the time McCoy was getting near the end, and you can see the logo on the bottom. So the glaze is what makes that distinct. Silver glazes were hard to make. Here's another great cat by Sessions from the 1950s, and look at him prowling. That's a really neat piece. That should sell for probably in the $85 to $100 range. These guys I just thought were so perfect for Florida. My mom actually has these in her house, and this is the first time I've ever seen a set outside of our family. My grandmother bought these for her back in 1977 when they were new, and well, now that's 40-some years ago, so I have them at an antique sale. And then I've got a couple of these 70s punch rugs with the, that came from kits that people would make or were made commercially, and I love the shag on that lion. He's so happy. And the flower power is pretty good too. I like that it was so clean. This is a great print that I've had in storage in Seattle, finally was able to get, and it's the Bar Hounds. This is from the 1960s. You have the Lady Poodle, everybody hanging out, having cocktails together, a Poodle and a Great Dane. That seems like that would be an interesting mix. These were done by Constance Deppler in the mid to late 60s, and you don't see them very often. It's really cute. I expect it'll sell for about 95. Some more fun stuff. I like the West German candlesticks. They're just acrylic, but people love those little spiky tops on them. The Viking epic crackle glass to the right there is the patio light from about 1970. They came in a bunch of different colors. Those are also popular. And then this cat, I just think it has such a great style. These were done by some sort of a studio in the U.S. in the late 70s, and they were basically a knockoff of Royal Ducks. They're not marked. I don't know who did them, but I think they did them very well. This is a wall pocket and a couple of Czech brightly painted vases there. And then we've got a couple of really good tobacco tins. The Briar Plug from Canada is worth 25 to 30. This one is worth at least 35 to 40 because it's an unusual color for that one. And then this one, because it mentions Cuba, should sell here in Florida. This is a really neat piece here. This is a hat 
made out of cedar bark and grasses. The Pomo tribe in Northern California made these, and you know so I like to wear you got hats. Motivated today, George, you're deciding to get some stuff out. Yes, I did finally get most of my stuff out. It's true. I had a hard time getting it there, but I did it. And let's see, see, look how it looks on. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It was a pretty smart idea. They were out in the desert and getting way too much heat. So, you know, cultures adapt the way that they know how, and this is what they did. The Austin Products is a neat piece that I got at the flea market in Cincinnati for an incredibly low price. And I think if someone recognizes it, it will go home with them. I've sold a lot of stuff already at this show. I sold this, the other scale, but I've got the torsion scale still. Interesting little ceremonial piece in the form of a bird. And then I noticed the last time I did this show that people really liked this style of ceramic work from Mexico and the Southwest. This one is Navajo, Susie Charlie, and you can see the mountains and the various geometric and size designs. Very pretty. So here is a neat collection of Blanco. I just got a whole bunch of pieces. I sold several yesterday, but I wanted to show these. These are the daisies, and you see they come in three sizes. This was a Wayne Husted design in the early 60s. I've got to dust them. They came off of the shelf, and I brought them right to the show. But the neat thing about these is they have all three sizes. The little one is the hard one to find. They made them all in the same mold and they would just cut them down to size and the company hated to throw away the extra glass so they made a lot of the tall ones, a fair amount of the medium sized ones and very few of the little ones with one daisy. But they were marketed originally as a graduated set so they had to make some of the single. So the single is actually more valuable than the double and the triple the rosé color, the pink color on the left there, is the color that they made in 1964 only. That was supposed to go to Gump's department store in San Francisco, and Gump's changed the terms of the deal, and Blanco said forget it, and then made that color for everyone else. Early 60s Blanco decanter worth about 100. We've got a nice working telephone, and then I'm letting go of my bar cart because I'm setting up house a little differently now. So the stainless cart's for sale, it's great size. The mask underneath is really fun. It's Felipe Horta from Mexico. These were done about 30 to 40 years ago. And you'll see the dance mask with the hair and then this very angry looking guy below. I've got some neat art glass paperweights, another Blanco decanter here. I like the radio. It's a Grundig, and it's got the hi-fi. It's the Grundig Classic, so it's a little newer than it looks. It probably is 1980, approximately. But it's got shortwave and AM and FM and everything, and it works well. And then on this table, we've got this really great set of the Caribbean dancers in the glasses with the bale. That is a really cool set you don't see very often. And I've got to talk to my customers while I do this, so bear with me here. If you folks have any questions, let us know. The Scotty Dog Lamp came from Utah. The only comic I have is Daniel Boone in that bottom there, and I don't really have anything much in toys this show, unfortunately. A few little Disney things over on the left table there. People are always trying to find me at Renegers. It's a little brisk today, you can tell. It's not usually this chilly, but it's a chilly 40-something degree morning in Florida, so you actually see fog in my breath. Anyway, people are always trying to figure out how to find my booth, and so here is the ticket. See this orange and Harvest Gold tra colored beer trailer from the 50s, painted in 70s colors behind me? Well. This is Kitty Corner from my booth, which is right over there under wraps. And the reason it's under wraps is because I need to go and show you more of this show. I'm getting that very fuzzy thing. You know, they pay a lot of money for photographers to get this effect for the uh, pinup magazine. So 
<laughs> it's great. You just breathe on the lens and you get it for free. Anyhow, while I'm thinking about it, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you're interested in memberships, you can see a video on that in my playlist or hit join above and it'll tell you about it too. Please hit thumbs up to like this video and click the bell to be notified of more videos. And let's go back to this one. These folks come to Mount Dora from Texas and they bring a bunch of glass every time that they come. They've got stacks of Fenton, they've got Old Northwood bowls, they've got Blanco, they've got Bohemian, they just get a ton of stuff. Here's this Viking Blue Neek, the big oblong bowl. They do nothing but glass. Maybe one or two pieces of porcelain. And then they've got a bunch of these pieces, which I'm really interested in. These are Chalet of Canada. They look like Murano, but they're definitely Chalet. I recognize the swoops and the way they're pulled. And this might be Lorraine or one of the other Canadian companies. People have really caught on to this stuff. It used to be a real bargain compared to Murano glass. Now the prices are starting to approach it because it was done by Murano craftsmen who were brought by the Ontario government to teach people their on the First Nations Reservation how to use their gas well to make glass and they did it for about 20 years and they made some really cool stuff. This color is called Vancouver Orange because that sounded very modern. Okay well he's filling in the gaps where I bought three of the four pieces. I got the Canadian pieces. I also got a little Fenton fairy light because everybody's loving fairy lamps right now. And I got the one in custard glass that glows like uranium. So we're going to put that in a, uh, I think we'll do that for a member live hall maybe and see how that goes. Popsicle stick lamps. I always gravitate towards these. I like to talk about the bar in St. Pete that's got about 30 of these. The old Key West. It's really fun. And this is a 60s Budweiser with the bow tie logo. This beer tray. I haven't seen this one too often. Welcome to Florida. Smiling faces to greet you everywhere. This guy's got cool stuff. The gator heads are only the beginning. He actually has a baby grand piano. And, and uh rock and roll man i got a bunch a ton of cool records man let's promote your records excellent i'll talk about records yeah look at this show and hut i've never seen a child's baby grand piano before that is really cool how much is that 40 bucks 40 bucks wow that seems like a bargain i'm, I'm going to tell someone about it i think yeah they go for over 100. oh yeah no i know someone who's a professional musician who uses them hey yeah. you can... bro. <laughs> really how in the world did you get real cannonballs? Those are cool. Yep, and you can tell they're they're crudely fashioned. They're not completely uniform. The foundry methods and castings are right. What a neat collection. How much does a real cannonball set someone back these days? Oh, uh, at least a hundred bucks. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. Yeah. They're real, they're not reproduction. No, I, you can tell by the way they're uh, cast that they're definitely yeah. the real deal. Come over here and look at these Elvis records, man. Might as well give you the tour, dude. You brought it up. Come okay, cool. Elvis. 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 Oh, still sealed, yeah. Elvis. Beautiful, right? I ain't no getting no better than that. You've actually got a uh, big selection for one. Uh, usually it's just sort of random stuff that you got a whole lot of one person. That's interesting. Well, it's a collection. Yeah. Look at this. Monterey Pops Festival, 1967. Oh, right? uh, yeah. It's not a reissue. John Lennon, imagine. Original. Monterey Pop, what a great festival that was. Trash can. Very nice. And the Shelly Foss. I always like seeing the Foss t barges, and I haven't well, seen this one before. A uh, record sign over here before you go. Absolutely. Here, check this out. License plate. Oh, is that a 1933 original? Yeah, that's a and tough the, year. Not many people had yeah, money for cars then. No Look at that. 1966. Nice Rod, and clean. Ohio. Yep. And original. you got a you got a pair there. Pristine, yes sir. Excellent. Hey, look at this guy. You know who that is? Oh, yeah. That's John Lennon. That's right. That's... Good morning, everybody. 
Yeah, that was, uh, was that his first solo album? Uh, that's from uh, the uh, White Album. The White Album, okay. Look at this. Wood plane. That's heavy. Hundreds. That's how you make that stuff nice and straight. And you got an old... Okay, uh, yeah, one more thing right here. Look at that. Bellows camera. Oh, that's a nice shape. Take a picture like that. Yep. That's a portrait. And stare down into your... Yep. Yeah. You want to take a landscape, you turn it sideways and flip that up. Yep. A lot of people don't know that. I have to say, I haven't seen anyone demonstrate that before. That's pretty okay, good. One more thing before I throw you out of my booth so <laughs> get back to work. Yes. One hitters, 1970s original. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. Have a good day, That's man. cool. Thank you. I appreciate the tour. You don't get a better, you don't get a better interview than that, man. That was pretty cool. Thank you. Very cool. See, people are a lot of fun here. The side job, right? <laughs> you want to buy another one, five bucks. Now, we've got someone having 50% off, and it's only Saturday, so... Wow, we're going to have some fun. I like this old Tom Snack Center because shelves are always useful and then they eventually sell. Watney's Red Barrel. This is English. It's a little stained, but that's actually a pretty good price. I might be back for that. And Decker. They have just a whole lot of different things. I like the painting on this old Kitchen Queen, which they have priced at $460, and then if it's half off of that, that's only $230. That's pretty good. And then look at this giant primitive hand-hewn trough. Little old kitty guitar for $30. If it's half of that, that's only $15. It looks like it's never been used. Pac-Man lunchbox. So just a variety of oddball things. But really where I'm headed is to see a friend of mine who said he brought some little stuff for me and I was so busy yesterday I didn't get to see him. So we'll find out whether it's still available. This dealer always brings some fun modernism and I love the way they set up the booth. Because even though they're outdoors, it definitely gives the feeling of being in a modernist shop. I like this guy. That might be a Bakelite handle. Glow Hill of Canada. Oh, I didn't know Glow Hill did this. I've never seen anything with jewels. I thought I recognized the handle. It's our morning for Canadian things, and that is a really cool little piece. I'm going to have to ask about that. Everything they did had Bakelite, either butterscotch or cherry Bakelite handles. Look at these really great painted Paul Herzl bookends with the pirates. They are really something. Well, I see people starting to come in, so I'm going to get back up that hill and get started on selling today, and then we will go shopping some more later. My neighbors this time are a nice couple from Minnesota who've come down. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> and they have some interesting things I wanted to show you. A lot of people don't realize that you could do entire tableware sets with this moonstone pattern. And this shows you that there are a lot of different pieces in the line. They brought a whole lot of neat things. They had a bunch of decoys. They've done very well, I think, from what I can tell, because a whole lot of stuff is gone that was here when they came a couple days ago. Uh, look at the neat oil bottles in the rack. It's really fun to find the whole set together. I think that's priced at, what do I see there? Three fifty dollars for all eight of them. When somebody says, do you want to be in a picture, I say yes, because almost nobody wants to be in a picture. They've got a bunch of farm okay, stuff. <laughs> so, anyhow, they've done pretty well and I'm not surprised. So this is Gary, he's a dealer from St. Pete and he does really good high-end stuff and I wanted to show these Austrian spelter pieces because these are by the same uh, designer who did the Austrian bronze. And what were you telling me about them? Um, no, you said it all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, like I said, in bronze they would be five, six, seven thousand. If you can find them, you know, I doubt if you could even find a pair. Of exactly. But the sculpture ones, 
Oh, that's a different market. The people that collect the bronzes usually don't collect spelter, but the people that collect spelter are more than happy to buy these. Absolutely. And their price. They can't afford to buy the bronze. Exactly, because these, are, but it's every and, bit and the same design. All the detail in, the, in the, the dress, look at the detail in the dress there. It's hard to believe. It is amazing. Yeah, it really is. They're just incredible. And look at all And the, the attention the to the detail on the painting. The attention to detail, the, right down to the toes and the toenails. and it, They're just, you know. I've been told, and it's been my observation too, that fingers and toes are the hardest thing to sculpt well, and that you can often tell a good uh, a good sculpture by that. Is that right? I've been, I've been told that, and it does seem like feet and hands are hard for people unless they're really good. I mean, if these are this good, imagine what the bronze ones are. Oh yeah, no, these are phenomenal, and they're eight ninety five, which means you can have a really gorgeous pair of things that look like five thousand dollar candlesticks. And that, of course, was the purpose of Spelter in the first place: was to give you the uh, option of having a beautiful bronze that you didn't pay like a bronze. The only difference is, even the Spelter ones, the painting is almost always yeah always has major condition issues. And yeah, they chip really yeah, easily. Yeah. The fact that this has almost an entirely, almost a hundred percent of its original paint is just—it's just incredible. Yeah, they're really beautiful, and those are Tiffany Sterling uh, shakers in Repuse. Whoops! Wow, those are quite lovely. Okay. Are they? They're Tiffany, maybe nineteen. Oh yeah, so that's early nineteen hundreds mark. Yeah. Very nice. Repuse. Yeah. Very nicely done. Thank you. Three ninety-five for those. Oh, you have lots of wonderful things, though. The French clock here is very pretty. Yeah, no one looked at that. Oh well, that's just because you know it's luck of the draw. That's the thing. That's why we have to do shows all over the place. People ask me why I travel so much, and it's because you've got to find your customer, and you don't know where they are, but they will find you if you if you put yourself out there. They will come to you. This is fun. This is an open case on the back of this watch. Open cases were so that you could see the movement, and a lot of times initially you'd only get these at the jeweler because it was so they could show you how the movement worked, but then some people started actually wanting to use them, so you will see them on the aftermarket. And I wanted to show this alabaster of da Vinci, only because I used to own that piece, and I thought it would be fun to show that things work their way up the market. I sold it to him, he's a very high-end dealer, and he'll find someone who will be the ultimate retail customer. Now this table has a lot of Depression Era glass. The Mayfair pattern here is very pretty. Ten dollars each on the dinner plates. It used to be you'd have to put out 25 or 30 for those. The nice thing is that dinner plates are starting to be on the market again because for a long time so much depression glass was into the collections that people stopped collecting it. New people stopped collecting it because they couldn't find enough to make a uh, set. So now we're seeing pieces come out so you can make a set. A lot of 1920s candlesticks. These are $10 each, and I think that's a good price because tall candlesticks seem to be a lot harder to find than low ones, in my world anyway. And this table, they've got the buy one, get one free, including on the pink Manhattan. That's my pattern of depression glass, and I still love it. Not every piece was made in pink, mainly serving pieces. The Hager Cat. Hager is so popular now, and the cat's a nice figure, very streamlined, that you don't really run into so often. Shaker sets, those are a very happy pair right there, and a very happy pair right there. And below is, well, a pair we can't really show. And then another happy pair. I love bookends, and these are Art Deco, with the little Scotties in bronze nice and heavy. These don't have a maker name. Sometimes these are new art. Bigger ones and more stylized ones are often Frank art. Behind those we have a nice Mosier perfume set with the hand painting. And look at the fish on the side. Mosier is a wonderful maker of glass from Central Europe and very highly regarded. Over here we have a 
cigarette or dresser box by the Moorcroft Company from England. This is very desirable wear as well. This is priced at 98 and that seems very reasonable for what it is. If you know Moorcroft, that's a good deal. And I'd like to show these because we run into these occasionally and people just see them in a cabinet and they don't really pay a lot of attention. Yeah, it's green printed, it's some guy on a horse, but if you turn it around, it's actually Southern Railway. This is the old Southern line back in the 50s and you see the diesel train on the back and that's your big clue. And that's why these are worth about 15 to 25 a piece, sometimes more depending where you're selling. Okay. Well, this dealer has tables of jewelry for a dollar each. Yep, we had tables of dollar, dollar, dollar. That's right, and stereo cards too. And the nice thing about having the show where there's pavilions is that you're able to have electricity and show some things that you might not expect to see at an indoor outdoor show, like chandeliers. This is a pretty clever way of displaying and the fact that they're all lit is very eye-catching. Now these are selling anywhere from $100 to several hundred depending on size and design. A lot of these were made in the 1950s and 60s when they were very popular. They've been very popular again the last few years. Fred Flintstone on Dino. Well, it's a little bit of a stretch because Dino was their pet and actually Fred rode a big stegosaurus at work at the rock quarry, but you get the idea. This is battery operated wind up from the early 60s when the TV show was on. It was the first primetime animated show. And Fred and Wilma and Betty and Barney were extremely popular with adults as well as kids. This Wildware vase I think is very pretty. Max Weil started Wildware in 1938 in the Los Angeles area. He was one of the many ceramicists who started in the wake of our cutting off of trade with Japan. She's all hand painted and she's just very sweet. I like her countenance. She actually reminds me of Alex from Chapter 2 Vintage Company. And then the one on the left here is Catalina Pottery. And this head vase is only $30. These used to sell for a huge amount of money. Catalina Pottery is marked on the bottom. Gladding McBean that made Franciscan took over the Catalina Island Pottery in the mid 30s and changed the name to just Catalina Pottery. So if you see Island, it's older and scarcer. Franciscan ended up moving the Catalina production to the mainland from Catalina Island so they could produce more, but it means it's not as scarce. Well, it was really fun bringing you this preview post view. I hope that any of you who are able to get to the show this weekend, come on out. And in the meantime, I'll be, for the rest of you, looking for interesting things to film and show so that you can enjoy it vicariously. I am George the Antique Nomad on Instagram, on YouTube, on Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 o'clock Eastern, and other places in the social media world, as well as doing estate sales and antique shows and appraisals, possibly somewhere near you. So I'll hope to see you out there soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!